Hey guys, Jason here with Fast Take Performance. How's it going guys, Ricardo? How y'all doing today? Hope, uh, hope y'all's Wednesday is going as good as ours is. Um, as you can see, uh, well, maybe you see a little bit. Jason kind of panned over here. We have uh, a Borla axle back system that we're installing for you guys today. Um, we we'll kind of get some questions a lot on email, messages. How do I install it? What does it take? Well, we thought we'd show you. Um, uh, this car is a, it's a V6 car. All axle backs are going to be just about the same. Um, obviously, if you have the dual mode, it kind of makes a little bit of difference. Uh, these are the single tip or the dual tip cars. Um, but like I said, the only real difference is if you have like an MPP car, the dual mode exhaust. Those are really kind of the differences that kind of come into play. Um, the car I ha we have for you today is a uh, V6 car. Um, as you guys can kind of see here. Um, it's going to be a simple axle back system. So, what's an axle back? Um, axle back is essentially anything from the rear axle is going to be replaced. Anything from the rear axle back is going to be replaced, including the tips. Um, so, anything forward is generally a cat back. So, how does a cat back start? What does it look like? A full cat back is going to go from essentially this point right here. A lot of manufacturers, they're doing something different with these 6th gen cars just because of the different uh, catalytic converters and the different connection pipes that are, uh, are in place. Um, but generally, a cat back will start either from this point or this point and all the way back. Some manufacturers, they actually take the points and they actually make it over here. So it's essentially the entire exhaust going all the way back. Um, but uh, like I said, this is a, this is a V6 car. Uh, the connection points are... You know, right here, here, here you can see the factory catalytic converter is right here. You got one on each side, and actually, here's what's a little special about the sixth gen V6 cars is that the secondary cat is actually right back here in the center of the car. So a lot of manufacturers uh, they'll put a larger resonator, which is here's a resonator right here. So they'll put a larger resonator um, instead of putting the cats way back here. They'll have the secondary cats a little bit further up by the transmission. But the V6 cars, they put the secondary cat back here and the resonator a little bit further back. Um, so that's kind of where the cat back kind of goes into play. But like I said, today we have an axle back that we're going to be installing for you. Um, now, we have the Borla S-Type uh, is what this customer chose. He wanted something just a little bit louder than stock. Nothing too crazy, nothing too uh, obnoxious. He's still It's a daily driver for him. So he wanted to uh, still enjoy the drive, obviously. So an S-Type is really kind of a, a good medium to, to between factory and loud. So an S-Type is really kind of fits in right between it. Um, the loud version obviously being the attack, that's going to be the loud version for Borla. Uh, but like I said, today we have the S-Type. And you guys can see here, actually that, those tips are very large. I'm going to say they're about four and a half, five inch tips. So as you can see, compared to the factory one, kind of put it up here a little bit for you. It's a big difference. So it's going to fill in this gap quite a bit, which is really great. And if you can also see, when I say axle back, I kind of, kind of hold it up here. Jason will kind of walk over and show you guys where kind of the connection will be made. Right at that rear axle, that's where the connection is going to be made. It's going to fit onto the factory hanger right here. It's got the connection point there, and it's got the, the hanger for the rear as well. Um, so these axle backs, how, let's talk a little bit on how to, uh, how to install an axle back. Um, installing an axle back requires you to cut the factory system. Um, and when I say cut the factory system, some guys don't have like a sawzall or something to actually cut it. So what you have to do is they tell you where to cut, uh, as per the instructions, they tell you where to cut, and I've already pre-marked it on this car. So you can see here, I've already got that marked there. So I'm going to take my sawzall and I'm going to cut essentially right there um, on both sides. Okay. So once we make that cut, remove the hangers, remove the other pieces in the back, the entire muffler is going to come down. Um, so we'll actually do a lot of weight saving uh, when replacing this factory I like to call it a suitcase because it's it's very huge. Uh, weighs a lot. I want to say this piece. I think we've we've weighed it before, and it weighs somewhere around 50 pounds. Just this piece here. So 
with replacing those smaller mufflers, you have a lot of weight savings on those. I want to say with those combined, I think they're probably about 20 pounds, 25 pounds. So you cut the weight in half as compared to the factory system. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get started on cutting it. Um, like I said, you know, looking at the instructions here, these are the instructions that Borla sends with it. It's uh, they're, all their Axaback systems kind of essentially work the same, and they have the same cutoffs. So they tell you where to cut it and everything. They have nice, uh, nice, good color pictures here. They tell you where to cut everything and how to install it. So the, the brackets and everything that we're going to have to take loose. I've already kind of read through those, so we'll go ahead and get started on the install. So a couple of tools that we're going to need is uh, a 15 millimeter socket or wrench. Uh, I like to use a socket just because again it gives a little bit more bite on the back. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the fact the rear hanger. We're going to move the bolts. Uh, it's got some studs that kind of hang on there, so we'll move the bolts so that way that stud will kind of sit there. So when we go to remove the entire thing, it makes it a little easier. They're kind of up here. Now there's two per, two per side. Um, now as you can see, there's one a little bit further up here and the one that I'm already on right here. So I'll take those two nuts off and we'll let the bracket sit there until we cut the exhaust and we're ready to remove it. So, uh, yeah, you know it's serious, Cassandra, whenever he's put his gloves on. Hey, Jay, how you doing today, buddy? Raymond, what's up, buddy? Thanks all for, uh, Tuning in. We're tuning in today. So while he's doing that, guys, here's the S-Type. You know, we showed it just a minute ago. Uh, what's nice about it is that, you know, it says Borla S-Type on it. Uh, obviously, that's going to point, you know, um, that'll be the opposite side. There we go. There's on the bottom, too. So you got it both on the top and the bottom of the muffler. That way, if you're looking underneath your car, you'll see the the boiler S type on it. It's probably the most tedious part of yeah. this job is, is taking these nuts off. Just because they're up in a position where you can't really get uh, an impact or uh, you know anything else. So it's really a wrench and a, or a socket, and you're really right about that. All you can do, and it, they're also on there a little bit more. Uh, you can probably kind of tell a little bit. They, from GM, they paint over the threads. So if you're wondering why I can't remove it once it's loose, those threads, they got paint all gucked on them. So yeah, they're just not easily to slide off. But uh, So they take a little bit longer. But once you get it going. So obviously we're doing this on the lift. You know, how hard would it be for most of you guys to uh, to do this on the ground? And it's not very hard at all. No. Um, I mean, obviously, you might want to put it on some board, drive it up on something, but I mean that's basically the depth, the depth of how far you're going to go in to uh, to cut the exhaust right there. So this could very well easy to be done in, in your driveway. Yeah. Hey Jeremiah. Hey guys. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Uh, if you like what we're doing, share our video, share our uh, share our stream here. That's why you're supposed to put on the safety glasses, guys. <laughs> so uh, I'll go ahead and put on my. Uh, eye protection and uh, instead, of, instead of having it hanging on there, falling iron, put it on. So these are the nuts he took off over here. Let's see if I can get up and show you guys a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah and like we say guys, I mean there's two per side. That one and that one. That's gonna allow that whole bracket there to uh, to come off with the exhaust system. We could have lowered the car and let you lay on your back. <laughs> Got to give you that driveway feel. Yeah. Like I said, guys, this is the, probably the tedious part. You know, like I said, there's all that paint gook up on there. So. It's a little bit loud. A little while.
And there's not a whole lot of room. So if you guys that have big hands, not a whole lot of room. You know, as you guys can kind of see. He's almost done. Almost got it. Almost got it. Real time. That's the nice thing about these uh, exhaust systems too is, I mean, you really can't screw it up, but Borla wanted to back it up with the with the right, and, and it has a left sticker on this one as well, so you can, uh, you really can't screw that up for the most part. It'd be really hard. Yeah, and kind of, you know, touching on the, the left and right, you know, some, some guys are like, well, if I'm looking at the car, <laughs> you know, it's one thing. But if, but a lot of a lot of aftermarket manufacturers and, and uh, manufacturers in general, they they tell you left and right when they're sitting in the car. So picture yourself yeah. sitting in the car, and that's going to be your left and right. Uh, so you're sitting in the driver's seat. Left is going to be driver. Right is going to be passenger. Something to think about. Getting closer here. So now what we're going to do is. We're going to do the part that no one really likes to get at. <laughs> and I got no problem doing it. Uh, some guys might have a problem doing it, but it's really one of those things that has to happen if you're going to do a, a cat axle back um, or really kind of any modification to a car. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our saw and right here on those points is where we're going to cut. So we're going to cut right there on both sides. The, they're equal length on both sides. Um, now we, we've already measured on this car and yeah. Borla says basically to measure from where the flat spot, uh, I guess, uh, ends on this point right here. You measure from here to here and I want to say it's what, four and three eighths? Four and three eighths. Four and three eighths. From this point to this point here is going to give you the, uh, the distance on where Borla tells you to cut it from. Definitely. So now he's got his saws all hooked up. It's all Definitely. plugged in. It's all plugged in. It's all plugged in. I like to use a little bit of... WD-40 kind of sprayed on the point, uh, the point I'm going to cut, kind of makes it a little easier. So some, kind of something to keep in mind. Get that excess going. Now here's the thing, can you, there's, they left you enough room in here as well if you wanted to really hacksaw it off. If you have to use a hacksaw mm -hmm. instead yeah. of a sawzall, you can, you, you got enough room yeah. where your hacksaw will go through here so you can cut that off. Yeah. So you don't necessarily have to run down to Harbor Freight or Home Depot and buy a by a sawzall, so it just makes it faster and easier. Yeah, it just makes it a lot faster. Um, you know, but uh, like you said, you guys doing it at home, if you got one, go ahead and use it. So we'll break the ahead. blade. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and line it up as best we can. All right, we got a nice groove in it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and continue cutting it. So it's gonna get a little loud. That's one side. That's one side. So we'll go ahead and cut the other side. And uh, like we said earlier, guys, they're, they're, the cut points are the same uh, on this system. Um, some manufacturers have different cut, po cut points as far as left and right, so kind of pay attention to that. But the boiler system is uh, the same side, the same on both sides. And that could happen. Yes. <laughs> do keep that in mind. So, like, when you're doing this, make sure you have two blades. <laughs> yes. We did make sure we had, just in case, because that happens. Oh. Even a local muffler shop, you know, it can happen too. So it happens. No problem. Got a new blade, and here we go. since we no longer need that. So now what we'll do, uh, let's see here. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, these hangers here, 
You can kind of see this one on best you can. This one, I spray them down with a little bit of WD-40, makes them move around a little easier. As you can see, the entire system is loose. So what we'll do is we'll take these uh, rubber hangers off, and then we'll take the brackets and pull those back, and the entire suitcase muffler, this entire thing will just come right down. So, you know, muscle that a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, my handy little helper over here. He's going to hold the, hold the muffler up for, for me. So now what we'll do, slide that bracket back, and we'll take this one, slide it off those studs. We'll go ahead and take this entire system. Thank you, Ricardo. We'll take this entire system and just lay it off to the side. So as you guys can see, there we are. So we're going to go ahead and reuse these, so just be sure to take these back off. Those will be reused for the boiler system. So, now that we've got that done, and remember, there is a left and right to these brackets, so kind of keep that in mind. So now what we'll do is we'll take the clamps that the uh, boiler supplies, and I like to just kind of slide them in place. I like to slide them in place to where when, once I tighten them down, I can kind of tuck them up out of the way. It kind of gives it a cl good clean look instead of something hanging down here. Um, so something else to kind of think about. So I'll do that there, and we'll go ahead and get the right side put on first. So we'll take... We'll take the hanger, put it on the muffler, and then go ahead and slide it on there. Sometimes these are tight connections, guys. Yeah. And also, also what you want to keep in mind too is that since we cut it, you might have some burrs in here, so you want to try and clean those off as well. You know, maybe a file, or maybe something, just kind of clean them up a little bit. There we go. Now, once you got it starting to slide on, you got the hanger and everything there. Slide it on. And then, you get the factory hanger, put that in place. So then, take the other hanger over here, and we'll slide that one back on. Alright, so now what we'll do, oh, nice catch there Jason. So now what we'll do, uh, I like to put the bolts back on here just loosely, not tighten them up yet, uh, just in case I want to make any adjustments to anything. So we'll go ahead and do that so that way those hangers just doesn't fall back down. Much nicer from that, from this, I'm sorry, from this to that. Yeah, and look, look already how much cleaner the bottom side of the car looks. Very nice. So now, Go ahead and get the other side. And like I said, we'll check these burrs here, see if we got anything. Got a little one there. Bring that up here. Now, it, it you do want to uh, have some gloves. Obviously, this stuff is going to be sharp. So something to think about, like I said, a file or, or uh, something to kind of knock those off. Of course, out pretty well. And we'll take the muffler and we'll go ahead and slide it in place. And as you can see, this one went on a little easier. Like I said earlier, sometimes uh, those those uh, those burrs kind of get in the way, but uh, once you get them cleared out, everything works out pretty good. So we'll get this bracket. Put up in place. So already guys, I mean, 
cleans up this entire look. Get this piece back on. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome, sir. We'll put the bolts back on loosely, and uh, like I said, we'll make some adjustments, tighten everything down, and then we'll tighten these uh, these brackets down a little bit. Uh, so now this same exhaust system, does it, it works on the 2.0, am I correct? Uh, yes. Yes, I do believe so. Yeah, so this Honestly, same... I think they have a different part number for it, but okay. it's something similar. It looks almost exactly the same, uh, but there is a different part number for the turbo car as compared to the uh, V6 car. It was nice about you. So these tips, guys, they're already welded on. You don't have to worry about trying to adjust them as much. I mean, obviously, you might do some adjustment on the center pipe, but you can kind of look already and see that they're lining up really well just the way they sit for the most part. So, and, and uh, I, know, I know at least us here, we like to pay attention to where those tips are. We always like to like, make sure they're even, they look even as far as how far they stick out, um, what the gaps look like and everything. So um, we like to pay attention to that. But like I said, essentially we're done putting on the axle back system. Tighten down a couple of clamps, uh, the, uh, the bolts back here, and we'll be ready to fire it up. Awesome. So, I'll take the clamp. And like I said. Now you are going to want to check a couple things um, yeah. on, on, ex on these, for the most part. It's like you want to check your internal hangers here. Yeah. Internal um, hangers. You want to make sure you're kind of, you know, maybe a little bit. Because what happens is, is when you put an exhaust system on these cars, the stainless is going to expand, it's going to contract, it's going to move around a little bit. So you want to make sure that you're not on that bracket. Because if you're on the bracket, it's going to, what's going to happen as the car heats up, it might start to rattle. Uh, we've seen that on a couple of different exhaust systems, different manufacturers. Um, that's one thing to always be looking out for is that, is that bracket there and, and that rod. Let me see if I can give you a better look at yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. That one's, that one's a good shot of it. Yeah, so that, that one, you gotta make, you gotta make sure it's where it connects right here between it, that it's not gonna hit. If it hits, like I said, it's gonna rattle. A lot of people don't pay attention to little things like that. Uh, unfortunately, we've done enough exhaust systems on these six gen cars to realize that that's actually what happens when these exhaust systems start to heat up. Yeah, and a, and a, good, uh, a good way to kind of find out whether or not it's gonna hit before you tighten up the clamp over here, mm -hmm. is go ahead and put these brackets, tighten them down, and then look at that, uh, look at that rod and see if it's touching or see how close it is. If it's close, then I would probably suggest moving the, the muffler back a little bit and go from there. It's a good looking exhaust. What's nice on the back of this Camaro? So the tedious thing is about doing this exhaust system, but basically this bracket right here for the most part. Yeah. Uh, the, obviously, like Ricardo said, the reason we take it off, we don't have to fight it when we're putting it back on, um, for the most part. It kind of just, it'll help, lets it just drop right down with it. Yeah, it's in there, it's in there loose enough to where you take all the bolts out and then the entire bracket would just drop right out. Yeah. So as you can see here, when I tightened it up already, it got, it's already touching. So, there's a good example for you guys. Yeah, that's so you start touching. So what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going to push this exhaust system farther back. Yeah. I'll, I'll tight, go ahead and tighten this one down too, just so that way, you know, if I got to do both, adjust both of them at the same time to make sure the tips line up and, and nothing goes out too far or too crazy, we'll go ahead and do that. So realistically, guys, we are 24 minutes into this uh, install so far. 24 minutes. So... Obviously, we already had the car racked. Um, we had the car racked, so it's at that point, it's, it, that probably knocked out about 10 minutes right there. So if you're doing it your driveway, let's just say it takes you 10, 15 minutes to rack the car. We're basically at, at right now 24 minutes into this as we're talking. Um, it kind of gives you an idea of, of, of what, it, what you're looking like if you're going to take your, your uh, car to get it installed somewhere or if you're going to look, just look at it doing it yourself. It's a pretty, a pretty simple install um, for the most part especially on the axle back so it's definitely something that you you can install yourself with simple tools i mean basically we we're going to be using a 15 millimeter socket here we use the sawzall like i said if you got a hacksaw which a lot of people have hacksaws you can you can use a hacksaw because the, believe it or not uh on the camaro they gave you plenty of room to actually cut in this area here with the hacksaw and the material's thin enough too. yeah you know it's not like it's gonna be something super thick uh, I think the hardest part of cutting these systems is really just kind of starting 
and finish it. Yeah. The, mid the middle portion goes by pretty quick. So that's that's kind of the, the I mean that's what makes these, these easy. So you really can save yourself, you know, depending on where you take it. If somebody tries to tell you it's gonna be two hundred dollars to install it for the most part, that might be what they want. Could you you know, you could always say, Look, there's a video here and we they showed how easy it was to install it uh -huh. and it's fairly simple. Yeah, so but, uh, this one here and I'll, i like where this tip is sitting. Uh, poking out just a little bit, just past that bumper. So, so now, now look at the, how much room he's got between the rod and that, uh, and that hanger there. Yeah, now that's on, that's on, that's on this side. Yeah. Now if we go over to this side, you can really kind of see the differences because the tip is obviously hanging out a lot farther right. on that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try and get this side pushed in so that way the tips look the same and hopefully we'll we'll go ahead and clear that rod so that way we don't have any problems with rattling. Yeah, another good indication too, guys, when you're installing this is if you look at this hanger right here, you see how it's pulled back, okay? That's gonna be a good indication of, of kind of like where, how much how much room you can push it in, yeah. uh, just to kind of get it level for the most part. Now, some exhaust systems, it sounds great in theory, but in reality, sometimes it's not reality. Sometimes they will be at an angle forward uh, or backwards. But so far, this boiler look on this one here, where the tip is located, seems like it's falling into a really good spot. So what we'll do, guys, it's a little a little tough, and so what I'll do is I've got a rubber hammer here, so all I'm going to do is just tap it a little bit, see if we can kind of get that. Get a little bit more room back. If not, if not, then we might have to recut if it's, uh, yeah. but I don't think it is. I think it's just kind of bound yeah, up a little bit. You can, you can kind of see it's kind of bound up in there, so we'll just kind of see if we can get past that. Either that we need to cut a little bit more off, <laughs> which I hope not. <laughs> no. I think we're good. I think we're just about there. So yeah, it depends on how anal you are. We're pretty anal when we're measuring up tips and stuff like that. So, um, so we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get it there and get a little off of it there. But yeah. that guy said that's something to look at, guys. Yeah. Um, we're gonna go ahead and bolt it down though. Because I know y'all are waiting to hear what it sounds like. That's something we're, we can go back and uh, we can go back and touch on. So, like I said, guys, I like to put the the, the bracket or the uh, clamp, sorry, up out of the way, so that way you don't have to worry about it. if you run over a bag, it's not gonna yeah. not gonna catch the bag, uh, you know, as likely to catch the bag. So, kind of tuck it up out of the way. Plus, it, it looks cleaner when you're looking behind the car. It looks cleaner whenever you have to it down. I have a 2.0. I'm yeah. going to replace the downpipe. And my I'm not sure about the mid pipe though. Is it a waste of money to replace the stock mid pipe, or is it good enough? Honestly, Ryan, I don't know on the on the right 2.0s as of right now. Uh, if it's a, if it's a, what, what actually the mid pipe is going to do. We haven't had enough enough feedback on yeah, it. No, yeah, we just haven't. I mean, uh, you know, a couple other we had trifecta in a couple about a month ago, and they said they they like the way it acts. So um, as far as us doing a little bit, we have really haven't had a, a whole lot feedback on it yeah but i know, I know with, the, with the different manufacturers out there that we, we should have a lot of feedback especially by the end of next not, next following week we, we'll have a lot more information yeah, we're definitely. going to a show to talk to more about with manufacturers about stuff like that definitely. why not christmas so why not just weld it into place so i mean you could weld it in place if you want to chris um but if you're if you're a guy in your driveway and you don't have a welder, mm -hmm. then it's made to clamp onto your factory exhaust. Yeah. Um, is it going to fall off? No. The only way it's going to fall off is if you don't if you don't tighten it enough. That's the basic it's going to weigh. Now, I mean, we keep a small little welder here. You know, if we if we feel like the exhaust system was going is going to fall off, we'll tack it in place. Um, but these these exhaust system guys, they're made to bolt right on. Yeah. You know, so that's what's nice about them. And also with like uh, higher horsepower cars, you know, guys that, uh, you know, they're making a thousand horsepower and they have a three inch system, you might want to put a couple of tacks on the exhaust just so it doesn't move because a lot of that pressure is just forcing that exhaust just straight out. So yeah. something to kind of think about. If you're not making a whole lot of power stock car, clamps work out just fine. You're making a lot of power forced induction, 
might want to think about welding it. Yeah, if you're moving a lot more exhaust gas, you know, you're, the, the temperatures and, and so on and so forth will be moving around. I, I definitely recommend tacking them, uh, but it's not, it's, not a, it's not a killer, you yeah, know. No, no. So, so we got the exhaust on. Um, it's bolted down. We're going to go ahead and fire it up for you guys. Drop it down and fire it up so you can get an idea of exactly what it's going to sound like. Now, this is the S-type also. Yeah. It's not going to be the loudest version that Moro has. Now, obviously, on, upon cold start, it's going to sound good. It's going to sound louder. Um, but, like, what, uh, once, it, once it warms up, it will get a little bit quieter. I hope this car still warmed up. <laughs> Let's get the Borla on the tips they're hanging out. All right, so we'll go ahead and fire it up. All right, Jason, we'll get with you on that. We're ready. That's it, guys. So it definitely got a deeper sound over over the factory suitcase. Definitely got a deeper sound to it. Sounds good, looks good. It positions very well on the car as well. If you look at the tips, they position very well. So this car, the aesthetic wise, just got a, a, a rear lift basically how you look at it. Because now when you pull up behind this car, you're not gonna see these dinky little exhaust tips. You're gonna see these, these tips right here from Borla. And like I said, I believe they are four and a half inch tips, I believe. Look, I think, yeah. So that's that's basically what you're gonna you're gonna get right there, guys. Um, solid, man. It sounds good. Yep. The customer's gonna like it. And the nice thing about it too is it's not gonna overly kill him in the cabin as he's driving. This is his daily. Oh, exactly. So you know, as yeah. a daily, sometimes that's important to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. How much does it run two SS on the Borla? I have to look it up. I want to say it's. It depends if you're going with axle back or you're going with the with the cat back. It's going to range anywhere from like nine hundred to fourteen hundred dollars yeah, for an SS. There. Yeah, for an SS, yeah, yeah, for an SS, they're a little bit more expensive, uh, just because of the different the, the larger tubing and the different muffler design that they have. Obviously, with a different option as far as the S type and the attack. Uh, this one is the attack, and I want to say it's somewhere around the range axle back wise. I think it's somewhere around six seven hundred dollars, somewhere around that for this version of the axle back for the V six. So that's that's the look you're gonna get right there. Uh, it's nice. Now we're gonna go back probably just maybe this tip over here yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more, but we'll go ahead and adjust. But that. we wanted to make sure y'all got to hear it in an in, in appropriate time today. And like you said, what, what we're right about uh, 30 minutes as far as install. We're 33 minutes right now from when we started this video. So 33 minutes into it from the intro to where we kind of talked about it a little bit to where we're actually doing the work and everything. Like like you said, we're gonna go back and adjust that tip a little bit more, but. Once we're done, we're, I mean, we're done. So You're done. You 45, 45 minutes, minutes. 45 minutes an hour minutes on, an hour. on the installation of an axle back. Um, and that's basically including racking it or if you have yeah. to. Um, yeah. Some people I've seen, honestly, I've seen, I've seen people squeeze themselves underneath the car, cut it, and pull it out. Yeah. You pretty much can it on, on one of these cars if you're a stock height. So, yeah. so also, also something to think about, guys. <laughs> when you order a Borla exhaust... They send you a hat. <laughs> you get a hat, guys. You get a hat, guys. So, I mean, you know, I, mean, I want to say there's some stickers and stuff in the bag also, but, you know, I mean, you get a hat, you enjoy the system, and everything works out just great. Yeah. So, you can't really beat it. Um, so, uh, so, guys, uh, I want to thank you for hanging out with us again today. Definitely. The Ricardo, I'm Jason. Uh, hope to see you next week. We yeah. thank you for watching us. If anybody's in Dallas, real quick before we go ahead and end it, if anybody's in Dallas, we'll be there next week. So, hopefully, we'll kind of try and be around somewhere. So if you guys are in Dallas, Texas, we'll see y'all there. Have a good one, guys.